Hello, true crimers of YouTube and Instagram. Oh yeah, this one is exclusive, just for you. This is the case of the Browns Chicken and Pasta Murders. Brown's Chicken and Pasta was a small chain restaurant which opened in 1949. This particular establishment was located in Palatine, Illinois, and it was owned by Richard and Lynn Ellenfeld. Sadly, on January 8th, 1993, their stories would come to an end. And this is one of the most just horrific stories I think I've ever covered. On that particular evening, there were seven employees in the Brown's Chicken. Richard and Lynn Ellenfeld, Guadalupe Maldonado, Michael Castro, Rico Solis, Thomas Menace, and Marcus Nelson. And the restaurant would close at 9 p.m. Most of their loved ones would be expecting them home sometime around 10 to 10.30. But when Michael Castro, who was a high school student, by the way, only 17 years old, when he didn't return home, his parents called police. And then a little bit later, Guadalupe Maldonado's wife would call police saying kind of the same thing. Like, he was supposed to be home, but he's not, and I can see his car is still in the parking lot. Something was wrong. So police arrived roughly five and a half hours after the restaurant closed, and when they got there, they noticed that the employee's entrance on the rear of the building was open. When they got inside the building, they noticed that the restaurant was not completely cleaned. It looked like they were somewhere in the middle of cleaning the building when they just vanished, apparently. That is until they opened up the door to the freezer in the kitchen. And in that freezer, they found just stacked on top of each other, five dead bodies. And then in the cooler, also in the kitchen, they would find two more bodies. Seven dead people, all shot. Two of them were also slashed across the throat. It was absolute carnage. And for the smaller kind of community of Palatine, it, this destroyed them. You know, you've got seven victims, which would correlate to six different families. And there really wasn't much evidence there to collect. No fingerprints, not any real trace evidence. There was a shoe print, but that would end up not leading to anything. You could tell that the killers had tried to clean up the restaurant because there was a mop bucket full of bloody water. The only thing they would potentially have was a half-eaten meal of fried chicken and french fries that was thrown in the garbage, and it was the only thing in there. In 93, they didn't have the DNA testing they do now, so they took this and they froze it. The police had very little leads to work with. They questioned all of the previous employees, including employees who had been fired recently, but none of those panned out. All of the alibis for those people checked out. Airtight. And for the ones who didn't have alibis, they were ruled out just because of whatever evidence they had. And for nine years, nearly a decade, this would go unsolved. In March of 2002, a woman by the name of Ann Lockett came forward to the police to tell a story. She said it was her boyfriend, James Dugorski, and his friend Juan Luna. Luna being a former employee of the Brown's Chicken. He was questioned way back when the crime happened, but he left the job on good terms. He got a new job and it all panned out. There was no reason, they had no evidence or anything to say, yeah, this guy probably could have done it. The girlfriend of, of James, she said they told her what happened. And if you're wondering, nine years, why did it take her nine years to come forward? Because James threatened to murder her. And well, let's be honest here, he's saying he just killed seven people brutally. She had no reason to believe that he wouldn't do the same thing to her. Now, because police had frozen the chicken they found in the garbage can that day, and they did that because they believed the killer ate this, because there was a receipt for about 10 minutes after nine, after the restaurant closed, that someone had bought a meal, and that meal was now in the garbage. And the restaurant, basically, whenever there was food still left, you know, under the, the heat lamps or whatever, they would let people in to buy the last bit of food there. Which, ultimately, that would lead to their downfall, sadly. Well, even after being in their freezer for nine years, this chicken, the bones, had DNA. 
saliva was on these bones. That saliva matched Juan Luna. And the testimony of James's girlfriend, well, that was very, very uh, helpful because she had said things that happened during the crime that was never released to the public. So they knew her story coming from him was legit. So was it robbery? Why did they do it? They did steal about $1,900 from the safe, but no, that's not why they did it. Juan Luna wanted to know what it was like to kill someone. They did it because they wanted to do something big. It's people like this that make me terrified to ever leave my home. They were both convicted and got life without parole. In 2002, Degorski got his ass beat by a sheriff's deputy. Oh, sadly that deputy got fired and he actually won money, $450,000. Fuck you.